We're actually going to be starting in the boardroom today with a quote. A woman who holds the honor of being the first woman president of University Sports in South Africa, Ilham Hronovald. She is a lady of first, and we'll tell you a little bit more about her in just a short while. But this quote comes from her, and it really is going to set the tone for today because sports administration is the focus. She said, the more role models women have in the sports industry, the more women will be prepared to take on the challenges. Ilham is also the chief director of Marty's Sport, and she is the first woman president of University Sports South Africa, a position she was elected to in October last year. She also became the first female executive council member for South African rugby. She certainly is a woman of first. Let's tell you a little bit more about Ilham. She is our trailblazer for today, achieved a number of firsts in her career. Ilham Hronovelt was the first woman to be appointed to hold a position that was once occupied by legendary former Springbok player, captain, coach and union president Dr. Donnie Craven as head of sport at Stellenbosch University, a position for which she was appointed in August 2014. She joined Stellenbosch from the University of the Western Cape, where she held the position of Director of Sport Administration for more than a decade. So she has a lot of experience and she is not a woman that is scared of putting in the hard yards and building a solid foundation. Ilam is armed with a degree in business administration and a master's degree in sports management. She was the first woman to be chairperson of University Sports in South Africa. A major first was being elected the first female executive council member on, in Saru in 2016. Kronobald believes the contribution of a woman in sport is still undervalued and can be improved with more women serving in decision-making positions with appropriate systems in place to register continuous advancement. In her opinion, there are still some barriers that need to be broken down. And couldn't we agree with her more here on The Ladies Club? We hope that the contribution by bringing uh, her story as well as the stories of so many other women in sport here in South Africa on the field of play and in administration will help to bring down those barriers. Our game changer for today wouldn't be the victim of circumstance. Our game changer is none other than Shonisani Masuta. She sits on the executive of the Federation of African University Sports amongst a number of other positions that she holds. She's only 28 years old and she's going to be inside the Ladies Club studio after the break. So stay with us and remember our on social media so easy to get hold of us at sports at SABC hashtag the Ladies Club. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with the Ladies Club. It's so easy to get in touch with the show on Twitter at Sports at SABC, hashtag the Ladies Club on both Twitter and Facebook. Time now to introduce you to our game changer. At 28 years old, she grew up in Clifton, Soweto. She was raised by her maternal grandmother for 19 years. She got a master's degree from the University of Venda. Both of her parents are primary school teachers, which is probably why she <laughs> believes so much in education. Her motto is, I was brought brought up to understand that family, love, God, honesty and direct responses are everything. We're going to put that direct responses uh, into, into action. We're going to put it to the test. Time now to introduce you to our game changer, none other than Shonisani Masuta. Very good morning to you. Welcome to the Ladies Club. Thank you so much. Good morning to you as well. Okay, so uh, you've got a very strong motto, a very strong foundation upon which mm -hmm. you believe and, and which you live. But let's just speak about how you got involved in sport, because actually it was through ballroom dancing. Yes, uh, when I got to the University of Venda, I did ballroom dancing, but it actually started when I was being raised by my grandmother. What I did is I grew up in Cliptown. What happened is they were so it was Cliptown youth. And it was headed by Brother Bob Naming. We had uh, dance, we had 
other activities which are related to art. So I taught kids around the area how to dance, how to sing, how to do poetry and so forth. So that's where I got it. And after my matric, I remember telling my mother that I'm not going to university, that I do not wish to study anything except dancing. That's when I went to moving into dance, Mupatunga um, Tabo in Newtown. I did my one year program and I completed it and they offered me a job as a professional dancer. Being me, I went home, visited my mother in Venda, told her what's happening, and she specifically said, wake up in the morning, wake your sister up, go to the University of Venda, find something to register for. So I got to the University of Venda, then I found Ballroom in Latin. Okay, I registered for social, but I found Ballroom in Latin. So once I'm not in class, I'll be dancing. And then we got the accident. From there on, I decided because I can't dance anymore, then I still need to be involved within the, um, the sporting industry. That's when the sports administrator, which is Mr. Taba Patrick from the University of Venda, introduced me to University Sports South Africa. And that's when I got my big break. Uh, tell us a little bit about the accident that curtailed your ballroom and Latin dreams. Uh, we went to a dance competition at Northern Academy in, in Bulukwane. On our way back to the university with the rest of the dancers, we had a head-on collision. So our two male dancers passed on, the rest of us were in crutches and so forth. I was one of the people who was in crutches at that point. I had broken my right femur into two, so it meant that I can't dance, I can't walk, I can't jump. But luckily enough, um, uh, they managed to implant a metal within my right femur, which I currently do have. It comes from here all the way up here. So I can't do all those things that I used to do, but I can walk. That's, that's a plus. <laughs> so basically that's what happened. That is hugely traumatic. Your friends yeah. and your dance partners passing away in an accident. It, it changes you. It changes you. But it does not take away the love that you have for sports. I think that's the greatest thing. And one thing about sports is that the people that came before us have made it a point that we are not only on the field, we are not only on the stage, that there are so many people that are surrounding the sports fraternity, that if you're not in the boardroom, if you're not in the field, you can be somewhere else, but contributing towards sport. And that is basically what saved my life and what gave me that hope to can still continue. And you've got a hugely positive attitude, which I suppose helped you quite a bit with your, with your, with your I, rehabilitation. I blame that on my grandmother. <laughs> Tell us a little bit more about that significant relationship in your life with your granny. Um, she's, everything I know basically belongs to her. And the woman that I've become, it's because of her. I remember I used, it was me, her and my cousin, my aunt's first son. There was always the three of us for that entire period of my life. And one thing she taught us was, his name is Koni. I remember we came back home and she taught us that family is important. There was a kid who hit me at school at that point. I got home, I told her, her first question was, what did Koni do about it? And I told her, no, he was there, but he didn't do anything. He got a hiding simply because he didn't defend me. That's how bad or how deep uh, family ties were for her. You know, you needed to stand for family above everything else. You needed to go to school. I think that's also one thing that made her to take my mother to school and made it a point that she finishes. My grandmother raised us as a domestic worker, but uh, when you look at all the grandchildren that went through her hands together with the family members, you can't tell that it was through her hands because wow. of the strong values that she had, the strong values of love, her principles, you know, her morals. She basically passed on from one generation to the other. I'm sure when she said to you, uh, when, your grand, when, your, when your mom said to you, um, You've done very well in dancing, but you need to go to the University of Venda. So no excuses. You <laughs> are going to go and register for something. You probably thought your mom was actually uh, hampering your dreams of actually dancing. Meantime, she mm. had hindsight that you the really truth needed. Is I resented it for quite some time. I think the entire four years of social work, I resented it. And the feelings became very strong after the accident because I started reasoning in my head that if it wasn't for me moving to Venda, if it wasn't for me going to the University of Venda, that incident wouldn't have happened. So having to get over that I attached my mother, the decision that she took, forcing me to go to school, at that point I didn't realize uh, that uh, sometimes we are redirected in life for a greater purpose. If I assess my life currently at where I'm standing. I'm very happy with what I've achieved. I've, I've, I've went international, I've worked with beautiful people, beautiful souls and people that are renowned in South Africa. You know, we've taken people such as, um, people who've, who are major big names such as Casta, 
Yes, uh, your way. They went through university sport. I got that chance to work with them because my mother took a decision to say, you're going to the University of Venda, whether you like it or not. But above everything, I think we're good now. <laughs> we, we're very good. Yeah, we're very close. Uh, could you have imagined how involved you would be in sports administration uh, when you started out at the University of Venda? No. It was, it was never even part of my dream. It was never something that I ever wished for. All I saw for me, it's like when you have a horse, you know, there was those clappers. It knows where it's going and that's exactly where I'm going. That was me with dance. I loved it personally and that was the only thing that defined me at that point. So I couldn't have in a million years ever imagined that this would be what I'd become someday. How did you get over that accident and that your life was now going to take a completely different path and you've achieved a lot when it comes to university sports administration. You're currently on the executive of the Federation mm. of African University Sport. You hold a high position when it comes to university sport within the SADC region mm. at under 30 years old. It's a major achievement. But just to redirect your focus, that mm. must have taken quite a bit from you. I had a very strong support system. You know, I think Mr. Taba, uh, the administrator, the sports administrator within the University of Venda played a huge role. You know, when he saw that I can't walk, I was in crutches and I had to learn all these things. He did not focus on that. He said, come, let me teach you something else. You know, I remember in his, his the first meeting of university sport that I attended, it was because of him. He said, let's go. You know, he just took me like that, called my mother, introduced himself, told her where we're going. And then there I was. So I stopped looking at what I'm going through and started looking at the new challenge that he's bringing in place. And he did not explain to me how it's going to be. He just said, let's go participate, talk, speak and all that. And that's what I did. So redirecting my focus came. I shadowed the feelings that I had with the challenge that was in place. And it worked magic. In time already, I had long forgotten about walking. I had long forgotten about the crutches. All I know is that I was up in arms and I was fighting for another papers. I was now looking at university sport. I now had other dreams, you know. How long did it take you to learn to walk again? It was three months. Three months? Yes. My word. It's an amazing story that continues. And we're going to be finding out more about uh, Shonisani Masuta in just a short while. She is uh, on the executive of Federation of African University Sports, as I said, uh, holds a position when it comes to university sports within the SADC region. And she's uh, gone through all of the steps to be able to do that. She's also inspired by today's trailblazer that we spoke to you about a little earlier on, Ilham Kronovald. So we're going to be chatting to her about all this and more after the break. Stay with us. The beautiful and driven Shonasani Masuta is our game changer on the ladies club. Remember to get in touch with us on social media at sports at SABC, hashtag the ladies club. Uh, before the break, we spoke about her foundation and how she got involved in university sport, being pushed in the right direction by, at the University of Venda by Mr. Taba. She was then elected into the National Executive Executive Committee as a student assessor. And some of her duties included supporting students through to successful conclusion of their chosen training sports program. She never quite knew that just getting involved in university sport would not only allow her to travel to neighboring South African countries, but it would take her throughout Africa and throughout the world. Last year, I understand that you were with the Federation of International Sports for University and part of their volunteer program. <laughs> Uh, yes, I was. It was very huge. It took place around June, July um, in Kazan, that is in Russia. What happened is that it had called 91 countries. Uh, it was a total of 110 participants. For South Africa was the only one. Now, we had a team of assessors, different people from different countries who were assessing how we participated, how we spoke to each other, how we debated issues, our contribution towards sport, and one of my most favorite, how we use social media to speak about sport, to speak about student development and transformation. And um, 
luckily enough, oh, <laughs> we went through that and South Africa took position two. Uh, we came back position two. And I think Yusa was very happy, you know, when you delegate someone to go and represent the country and they come back being position two. It's, it's amazing. The award for that for the top five was that one would, uh, the top five would intern at the World Student Games, which also took place last year in Taipei. So I also joined the FISU executive in Taipei, where I assisted them with various projects that they handed over to me. So what is your main area of focus? Obviously, you're dealing with uh, uh, some of a lot of the presidents uh, from, different, uh, from, from different countries, um, uh, federations, but what is your main area of focus? Because you speak a lot about your ability to guide students and, and stars that we now see guide them through university sports. Mm. So tell us where that main area of focus is. Two things. Um, the first one is student development within sports. Um, the second one is being able to make it a point that students are able to access uh, different sporting codes different in different sp uh, universities and they are able to use that as a tool uh, for transformation. It's quite a challenge though when you look into Africa because mm. in a country like the United States, university sport and the structures are well developed. But within Africa, it's different. And I'm sure in different countries, you get different levels of how much those structures are really developed and are actually working to help the students progress through and give them opportunities. Uh, but that is very true. One thing that I've noted is in terms of the countries globally and just within our country as well, there are various dynamics, very different. One situation is different from the other. Same applies to universities. You know, The University of Pretoria has a high performance uh, center, which is very developed. But when you go to the University of Vendor, the case might be very different from that. But we need to come together and look at all these universities as part of one. Their main objective is to advance student sports within the country and within the globe. So we try to take all the bylaws, different as they might be. We go to conferences, we try to strategize on what's the one thing that can work for all of us. Now, we'll have the one rule that works for all the countries, but each and every single country will go back home and make it a point that they feed from that particular rule. So you, make, you look at your needs, you look at where you lack, and you try by all means to, um, to focus on that particular rule with taking into cognizance the various needs that you have. Where is university sports at within South Africa? University Sports South Africa, USA, exists in the various uh, universities. We, our member institutions are universities. So uh, we have various universities who are affiliated to USA. Uh, the students that we get to go with that mix up the team are from the universities. So the University Sports South Africa acts as a body that makes it a point that they coordinate all these various universities and all other member institutions into making it a point that they find a team and they find athletes that are well qualified to can then represent South Africa. So I think to answer your question, University Sports South Africa, it's at a very good place in terms of developing and making sure that there's transformation within Africa and within sports within South Africa. When you speak about a transformation, you guys in October, as an organization, elected your first of woman <laughs> president in Ilham Hornevald. I spoke a lot about her. She's our trailblazer for today. And she must be a source of inspiration for you. She has to be. Um, when I first met Mrs. Hornevald, I call her Mrs. Green. Um, Mrs. Hornevald has, my first impression of her was that she's very strict. She is very outspoken, very opinionated. And one thing that inspired me about her, when we spoke of the constitution, she knew it inside out. So this is not a woman who's just opinionated, it's a woman who reads. So if you find a woman who reads, who's opinionated, who's not afraid to walk with the two, then you have a very good catalyst when it comes to transformation. And that was my first impression of her. When she became president, she was first vice, uh, I think, in a previous time before she became president. You know, you always knew that in her there's a greater leader. Uh, you look at uh, what she's been through, you look at what her, how far she's come and where she's going. You basically sit with a woman who's an inspiration. And one other thing that I also love about it is that she has passion for working with students. You know, we, in the NEC we have five students and then we have five uh, staff members, if not mistaken. Now. 
Mrs. Grunewald will always make it a point that students participate. So you don't get to an NEC meeting and just sit and talk and that's it. You need to participate. She'll delegate responsibilities to you. She won't say you are a student, therefore you need this minimal you know, of duties. No. She'll give you what she's giving the rest of the people as president and she'll expect you to deliver regardless of your student status. <laughs> and that is leadership. And you enjoy that. It seems like you are a woman that likes to be given <laughs> responsibility. Accountability is key. And if you are led by women that are responsible, why not? Where do you see yourself in five years? H. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I okay. see... What yes. if? What if we say, what is your ultimate goal? What would you ultimately like to achieve in sports administration? I like to have at least 10 girls that I can point at and say I mentored all of them. And they are all in various positions within student sport, whether it's in universities or in other private sectors, but they are within sport and they are doing wonders. Because one thing about transformation is that sometimes it may come with time. It's not a quick, quick issue. And I can't achieve it alone based on my skills and my abilities. I need a team. I need soldiers to do that work. So if I can point at five ladies who've made it, then I'll be very happy. You speak about wanting to mentor yes. 10 young ladies. Mm -hmm. Who has been your mentors to get you to where you are currently? She currently sits as the head, the director of sports at the University of Johannesburg. Her name is Ms. Nomsa Matlangu. She was also part of University Sports um, uh, NEC. When I came into the NEC, she was the woman who would always say, if we're in a meeting and we're sitting and we're not participating, she'd send an SMS and say, participate. She wouldn't tell you what to say, she'd just say, participate. So you knew that whenever you sit, you needed to strategize, you needed to know what they're talking about, you needed to have a voice. And then after everything, she'll sit us down and she'll tell us, this is how you conduct yourself. This is how you speak to people. If you want to be known, this is the people that you go to. This is the channels that you must look at. So basically, she taught most of the thing, almost everything that I know within sport. And I must say that with what she's taught, I'm very happy. I'm very thankful to her. And it sounds to me as if she didn't just uh, teach you the content. She also taught you the how-to, the things that aren't yes. written in the book and mm -hmm. the things that aren't written in the Constitution. That is true. Uh, the great thing about having a mentor that has been on the field is that she gives you practical experience. She also gives you theory. You know, with practical experience, this is a person who say, I went and I tried swimming and I drowned. You know, and this is what I did. I panicked and my hands were all over. That's practical experience. So you know that when you're going swimming, this is what you shouldn't do, this is what you should do. And should you happen to drown, this are some of the things that you shouldn't do. So she gives you something that is tangible and something that she went through. There's nothing that beats um, practical experience and getting it for someone who knows. So when you mentor your 10 girls, what is going to be the one golden nugget of advice that you want to leave them with? Never step back. Never ever step back. Continue walking. Whether you get blown away, whether it hurts, stand up, cry moving forward. Don't ever let go. And ladies, that's our game changer for today, ladies and gents. Shonisani Masuta, today's game changer on the Ladies Club. So good to be in your company for today. Remember, we'll do it again next week on SABC 211 to 11.30. Until then, remember that greatness is never given. It's always earned. Bye-bye.